I want to share with you some disturbing data about a college education, a college degree today, just to see how you react to it. Did you know the average price of a house in 1980 was $64,000 and it's $336,000? That is an uptick of 425%. Did you know the average price of a car in 1980 was seven grand? Today it's $47,000. That's an increase of 571%. But did you know the average cost of college from 1980 till today has increased? Ready? 1200%. By the way, inflation from 1980 till today is 236%. Cost of college tuition, 1200%. Let me get this straight. Income's only 217, 220. Tuition for college is 1200%, 1000% more. How can the average American afford to send their kids to college or the student to pay for it? We're going to talk about that today. Okay, so before you get upset at the college you went to or you're going to right now, let's ask a few questions to see if it's really worth it and then let's make a decision. But if you get value out of this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe and share it with others. Five things we're going to talk about in this video. Number one, the cost increase. Number two is the actual investment, meaning the four to five years and the money you spent into it. Is the rate of return worth it? Roll college plays. Does it carry the same weight before? And how will it be disrupted? What's going to happen to the future of college if they keep going the way they're going today? So let's get right into it. Okay, so today's sponsor to the video is Udemy. And if you don't know about Udemy, Udemy is the largest online education technology platform in the world. They have 40 million students. They have 70,000 instructors, 157,000 courses in 65 languages and 80% of Fortune 100 companies use Udemy to upskill their employees. And me, myself, there's three courses I want to recommend to you. They got an online MBA course. If you've never taken, I highly recommend it. There's an online programming for kids that my kids are going through it. And last but not least, they have a great course for digital media. If you're a salesperson and you don't know a lot about digital media, if you're running a business, I highly recommend you taking those courses yourself. And being part of IETM, you get a discount. So either click on the link above or below to go to Udemy and take one of those three courses or search any other courses you'd like to take. So let me explain to you my concern from a perspective of being in the insurance industry, in the financial industry, 20 plus years. And my agents would come up to me and say, this client here, Patrick, uh, wants a $2 million insurance policy. Will this insurance company underwrite it? The first thing I always said is, would you underwrite this client with your own $2 million and risk that? And they would say, I don't know. I said, tell me why. Well, the person's 62 years old. They smoke two packs a day. Mom died at 68. Dad died at 65. Uh, 65. He's out of shape. He's 320 pounds, but he's got the money to buy it. I said, would you give them $2 million and allow them to buy it for me? He says, I probably wouldn't do it. I said, so why would the insurance company do it? Well, let's just see if they're going to do it or not. So you can submit it, but I don't think they're going to underwrite it, right? Pat, what are you saying? What's your point? Here's my point. So if college is so great and it's so worth paying the $30,000, $50,000 per year, why don't private banks finance it? Why is most of the financing being done by the government? And why isn't the government uh, uh, preventing these colleges from increasing the price? So every year college increases the tuition. The government's like, yeah, we'll finance it. Yeah, we'll finance it. Yeah, we'll finance it. And then when a kid who's 23 now and wants to follow BK or 28 now, they'll be able to BK their credit card debt, their car loan, all this other stuff. But you're not able to BK your college loan? How? Why not? Well, who created that law? Well, the government did. How? Because... Colleges and government are officially in bed together. For every dollar that they loan out, tuition goes up 60 cents. For every dollar. So universities are like, oh my gosh, loan more because I can increase my tuition. Loan more because I can increase my tuition. And these politicians are confused the hell out of people in America talking about how private corporations are not paying enough taxes and all this other stuff. Blah, blah, blah. Really? Wait till you see how much these colleges have in, in their endowments, in their checking accounts. And on top of that, the fact that they pay zero in taxes and they have zero regulation on how much they can increase their prices. So maybe you ought to ask your politician and your community if you're so worried about protecting these medicines that takes five cents to make and they're selling it for a hundred bucks, how come you're not going out to college, you know, calling out colleges and universities for charging as much as they do for 18-year-old kids to go into debt that they cannot afford, that they have to pay 20 years to pay off? Why don't we go hold some of these colleges accountable for paying this much in taxes? March Madness. You got football games. This much in taxes. Yet let's distract them and focus on these corporations 
that are creating jobs. And oh my gosh, they're not paying any taxes, which they're paying billions on top of billions in taxes. I think it's a fair question to ask. So, so now somebody may say, well, Pat, that's not fair. The way you're talking about it is the fact that colleges, all they do is they sit on cash. Maybe they do. Let's look at their dollar amount. Here are 10 universities that have a minimum of $10 billion or higher in their endowment account, which is kind of like cash. And I'm going to compare how much cash they got versus some corporations. And I want to kind of get your reaction to see if you're okay with that. Let's go through it. Top 13, Cornell University, over $10 billion. Vanderbilt, over $10 billion. Emory University, $11 billion. Washington University in St. Louis, over $14 billion. Columbia, over $14 billion. Northwestern University, over $14 billion. University, University of Notre Dame, or, over $18 billion. University of Penn, over $20 billion. MIT, $27. Princeton, $37. Stanford, $37 billion. Yale, $42 billion. Harvard, ready? $53 billion. Now let's compare them to some corporations. And again, I really want to see your reaction. Comment below. If this gets you thinking and saying, how the hell is this even possible? Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Ready? Watch this. You ever heard of a company called McDonald's? You know how much they got in cash? These greedy people, $2.3 billion. You ever heard of Starbucks? Massive, 420,000 employees. You know how much they got in cash? 3.8 billion. You ever heard of this company called Disney? You know Walt Disney? You know how much they got in cash? 16 billion. You ever heard of Tesla? This company Tesla ran by this greedy guy. You know how much they got in cash? 18 billion. Ford, 36 billion. Coca-Cola, 36 billion. Pfizer, 51 billion. Even Meta, Facebook, has 54 billion. Only one billion dollars more than Harvard. Are you okay with that? And we're, we're so hardcore on these guys not paying any taxes. Yet colleges and universities, they literally pay zero taxes, okay? And they have the same amount of cash, if not more, by all these other corporations that are day-to-day -day competing. They have to compete every day, hiring, firing, enemies, competition, regulation. And universities' regulation, hey, keep funding it, guys, because the federal government's financing all the loans. Don't worry about it. It's all going to be all right. Are you okay with that? Does it make you think the way it makes me think? All right, so now that you got your blood uh, flowing and you're kind of sitting out there saying, I have no clue this type of stuff is taking place, let's talk about average starting salary when you go to college. A kid goes to college, I'm willing to do everything you told me, counselor. I'll increase ACT, SAT, I'll take the honor, I'll take this, I'll take everything you said because I want to get in because you promised me when I get out, I'm going to get a fat salary. Do you know the average expectation of a college grad when they come out is to make $104,000? But do you know what the average college grad come, makes when they come out? $55,000. By the way, do you know the average uh, computer science graduate that comes out, they're expecting to make $95,000. They're a little bit more realistic. And their average salary is $75,000. Watch this one. The ones that are the ones that think they should make the most money and they make the least. Journalists get out of college thinking they should make $107,000. You know what's the average journalist's salary when they get out of college after they went to Columbia and spent a couple hundred thousand dollars? $45,000. That's the starting salary. Let me give you some starting salaries you ought to be thinking about. Humanities, $50,000. Communications, $55,000. Agriculture, $57,000. Business, $60,000. Social science, $61,000. Math and science, $67,000. Engineering, $74,000. Computer science, $76,000. Do you get the idea? You want me to spend $200,000 to come out and compete in a marketplace after giving you four to five years of my life and I'm only making this kind of money? Was it really worth me spending the dollar there? Maybe it is. Maybe there's other things that we're not even talking about, which we will hear in a minute. So, so let's talk about evolution of education and why it was needed and how companies are going away from requiring four-year degrees. And I'll actually give you some specific data, but here's what happened over the years. So we first started off with age of manufacturing in the 1900s. This is when companies like Ford, Boeing, GE, RCA came out. And companies started saying, look, man, we need people to be a little bit more educated. Okay, great. Universities are like, hey, we'll offer this, we'll offer that. And so companies said, it's better if we hire people that are going to college. So college was actually valuable because it was teaching things that you need to know at that time. Then we went to age of distribution. This is when Walmart came in, Toyota, Procter & Gamble, UPS. So they started saying, look, we definitely need, this is getting global, business is changing. We need some people to start having a little bit more experience. College is definitely more necessary then. Then in 1990, Age of Information showed up, and Google, Yahoo, Comcast, Facebook, and the idea of memorizing stuff when you went to school was no longer valuable. Google screwed everything up when it came down to memorization because nobody, the only, like how much does an average guy on Jeopardy make for memorizing all the stuff that they do? Tell me a billionaire on Jeopardy. 
<laughs> what a great memory you got. It means nothing because I can answer it faster than you based on Google. 100% of people in the world are smarter than the smartest guy on Jeopardy because they got Google in their hands. Let me say that one more time. 100% of the average person in the world is smarter than the smartest person on Jeopardy because they got Google. Game over. So if you won Jeopardy 28 years ago, nobody cares today because the average seven-year-old can beat you because they got access to Google. YouTube, if I want to learn how to do something, yes, 40 years ago, holy shit, I got to go find somebody that knows what they're doing. Today, YouTube, just get on there. You'll learn how to do everything you want to do. Pretty much everything you can learn how to do on YouTube. Those two changed the game for education and people started actually asking, is it still worth it? Then we went to Age of Customer, which is today, Uber, Airbnb, Airbnb, Amazon, Netflix, Apple. So some of these corporations sat there and said, wait a minute, is it that important for us to send kids to college and only focus on recruiting college kids? So look what happened to some of these companies. From 2017 to 2021, Orange shows how many of the people they were hiring had four-year degrees. Red shows how many it is today. So 2017 is Orange, 2021 is today. Intel is requiring more people to have four-year degrees today when they hire them. But look at Google. Google cares less about a four-year degree today. Apple definitely cares less. Facebook is a little bit less. Microsoft is less. Accenture is less. And IBM is about the same as it was before. So what's the moral of the story here? Corporations are sitting there saying, yeah, we used to require for you to have a four-year degree. We don't require like, like we did before because there's many other ways to get the education and the training they used to get only through colleges. So top 10 companies that no longer require a four-year degree. You ready? Google, Apple, Bank of America, Tesla, Netflix, IBM, Penguin Random House, Costco, Starbucks, Chipotle, no longer sit there and say, we need a college degree like we did before. So let's keep going. Now somebody may say, Pat, I still think colleges are worth it. So let's talk about five reasons why people go to college and why you know, it's necessary for us to go. What is the real reason we go to college? Number one, the actual education we get, right? We're like, I'm gonna go to, it's the actual education I get, fine. Ask the average person that went to college, what they learned, what percentage of what they learned they can recite today. Four years you went to college, what can you recite from what you learned in college? Tell me. And they'll sit there and say, well, I learned about this, I learned about that, I learned about this. Fine, a lot of it is memorization because our educational system is still based a lot on memorization and Finnish, Finland University is being known right now as one of the best education in the world. They don't grade you on memorization, they grade you on actual processing because today, like I said earlier, nobody cares how smart you are to memorize because Google's a great equalizer. They wanna know how you process issues, how you make decisions, watching how things are being done visually. That's the direction some universities, some countries are going to, and some in America are staying the same way, which is memorization. You better know the answers to these questions because you got 92%. Does that really apply in the day-to-day -day stuff? I took so many tests in my life. Ask me what I remember from these tests. I like problem solving. That's what helps, right? And that's what a lot of us do need. But the actual education part, you can go on Udemy and take a lot of those courses for a fraction of the cost you spend at university. So the cost comparison to what the actual education is, there's plenty of competition for it elsewhere. Number two, degree, diploma, the label to be able to say, I actually got this degree from this university. Fine, maybe for pride, maybe for family went there, you know, some parent went there, mom went there, dad went there. We got four generations of people that went to Stanford. I totally respect generation and, you know, rituals. I totally respect all of that. Fine, do that part. But to be able to say the diploma, how many people sit there and say, can I see your actual diploma on what you got? Certifications, plenty of different things that you can do nowadays to get that, but the diploma may be one of them. The third one would be the network. Matter of fact, I think the network is actually the most valuable when you go there. You're gonna meet people. That part, no matter what people say, just go watch the movie Social Network. They sat there, they met all these guys, and they were able to recruit from each other and build a company together. That's a strong network. That one part I give high value if you go to the right place to build the right networks. But again, at the same time, you can spend $10,000 and go to the right business conference, spend a week there, and still build a lot of strong relationships at a great business conference in Europe, here, many different places that you can find those types of things. Number four, safety. It's the safety of if it doesn't work out, I got a backup plan. Anybody that did anything big in life that you and I read about, their mindset isn't a backup plan. Their mindset is, I'm gonna go out there and go all in and make this thing work. So the backup plan is for those that are wanting to play it safe. You may wanna change that mindset. Our entire system is built on getting people to think safe. 
in the entire system of big companies is built by people that weren't worried about that. So which one do you want to be? That's a decision more for you to make, not for me to make. And last but not least, freedom, independence. Hey, I can go out there and make as much money as I want to make and do all the stuff that I want to do. Fine. You just saw the numbers. Were you impressed by the average salary of people coming out? You may want to rethink this part about these five benefits that we always talk about when we go to college. You know what's one of the worst things that happens to universities in America? COVID. COVID exposed everything. Here's why. When COVID happened, universities, being the most responsible institutions out there, they shut down and they started doing everything with schooling through Zoom. Now, Harvard came out and they asked the question. They said, listen, Harvard, since I'm coming home and I'm not coming to the school and everything is based on Zoom, can you give us a discount? And Harvard said, nope. The stamp of approval when you get a degree from Harvard is very valuable. And because of that, you have to pay this much money. Perfect. That got some people to think and say, wait a minute. Aren't one of the five benefits of going to Harvard and the institution is to network with other people and spend time with them? Yes. What happened to that? Wiped out. The biggest value of going to these universities is the people you network with is officially gone and they still wanted you to pay full price. No discount, even though COVID was going on, which got people thinking, let me get this straight. If we are going to school at home on Zoom, why do I need to go to a school in the first place? It got people saying, Maybe it's a big opportunity for us to disrupt the educational industry as a whole and come out with online courses. Maybe we start, and everybody started innovating. A bunch of people started innovating, and it exposed another major leak in universities when COVID took place. Knowing anybody and everybody can get educated, not necessarily needing to go to schools because I miss out on the opportunities of networking. If I still have to pay full price, I'm going to go elsewhere to get it done. So at this point, again, we've covered a lot of different things, but I want you to focus on one thing. Do you remember the five benefits we talked about earlier about going to college, education being one of them, and then we talked about the degree, the diploma, the network, safety, freedom, and independence? Well, let's go through each one of them. Education, today, you can get anywhere, Udemy, online courses, YouTube. In regards to the diploma, we know it means nothing today. Why? Because the actual education, with the speed of innovation, they can't move at the speed of innovation. Their curriculum is behind five, 10 years, and it's constantly catching up, and we're moving faster. So that's out the window. You need to learn courses. Like, imagine like reading a social media textbook from nine years ago. Would it make any sense? That's how many of these universities have their textbooks, and they can't catch up with the changes. Number three, network. You're doing COVID. How are we going to network? You can network anywhere you go. Number four was... Uh, Safety, the fact that you have a plan B, if you want to live life with a plan B, you're probably going to be you know, missing out on a lot of big opportunities for yourself. And last but not least is being away from family and, hey, I kind of want my own independence. You can do that and go travel in Europe, get a job and live there for yourself and learn about different cultures. You can do that. So at this point in the game, you may be thinking, Pat, you must be 100% against college. Not at all. If you're doing STEM, science, technology, engineering, Mathematics, you got to go. If you want to be a doctor, you got to go to college. I want you to go to school to know what you're doing when you're working on me or my family, right? As well as law. If that's what you want to do, it's a niche. It does make sense to go there. This is not 100% against it. This is accountability for colleges for you to start asking a question saying, why are you charging this much? If it was this much, I could justify sending my kids. But my income hasn't increased that much in the last 42 years. Why are you increasing that 1,200% when my income's only increased at 217%? That's what I want you to be thinking about. And then at the same time, you have to say, well, listen, I can't afford to send them. They're great. You got to make some choices. So here's seven alternatives for you instead of going to college. One of them is vocational education and trade schools. There's a lot of places you can go to learn trades that's paying very well. 50, 75, $100,000 your income. Plumbing, you know, there's coding, there is, you know, there's a lot of different trade schools you can go to. Number two is shadowing. Go shadow somebody you respect in your community that's doing very good. In an industry that you're considering, watch how he or she works. Watch how they negotiate. Watch how they are on a daily basis at the office and work, whatever they're doing. Shadowing be number two. Number three, entrepreneurship. Start a business with a couple of your friends. You may fail, it may not work out. You may end up losing $10,000, $20,000. It's a lot better than losing $200,000. And I guarantee you one thing, when you do start a business, you will learn more starting a business in six, 12 months than you will going to school for four years because there's things that happen in business that no four-year degree is going to teach you. Next is online courses or free classes on YouTube. There's plenty of content on YouTube. A guy asked me a question the other day. He says, Pat, 
For the last eight years, all I've done is watch all the how-tos on Valuetainment, and I have a notebook. He showed me his notebook. Every single how-to video we've ever shot up, he had taken notes. He says, this has helped me get his business, was doing 11 million a year. He went from zero to 11 million a year. He says, just simply following the content here, and it's free. Online courses, Udemy, plenty of courses to get to learn what to do for yourself. Next, military. Yeah, I was just telling uh, 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 Eric here, who was in the Marines before, I would not be the person I am today without the military. In the military is when I learned how to work 80 hours a week, team, crisis management, all of that, because that's what the military is all about, especially for some of you that are undecided. You're going to have the time of your life. You're going to travel. You're going to get your butt kicked. Someone's going to challenge you nonstop. You're going to come back being in better shape, and you will be able to handle teams and pressure. That's what military provides you. And a couple last ones, work your way up, go to a company, work from the bottom, bring value, keep improving, be willing to be challenged and constantly improve your game and eventually you'll be able to work your way up in a company. And last but not least, online college. These universities, many of them are now having to teach online courses, online colleges, and it's a quarter of the cost. Many great universities are coming out and they're offering this. If you can't afford or don't want to pay the $150,000, $250,000 of some of these schools, go find plenty of online colleges that will help you take courses and classes at a fraction of a cost. So if this video got you thinking and you're sitting here saying, my gosh, I, I want to watch this again. I want my son to watch it, my mom to watch it, my dad to watch it, my peers to watch it. I want my professor to watch it. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and comment below some of your ideas. And if you want to get today's PDF, click here of all the notes. And last but not least, I did a video titled 15 Things, Colleges won't teach you. If you've never seen that, click here to watch that video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.